everybody. Welcome to my work state. I'm Cassie. I'm Keegan. I'm Christina. Oh, boy. What a week. Exactly. I'm exhausted. Yeah. And we didn't go to another podcast event. And just still a hangover just, from last week's podcast yes. event. You're just still tired. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I had like three days in the office this week. And it's never one of those things. I was just telling Christina on the way here. I'm like, I don't just go into the office and sit behind a desk and like do stuff. Like if I have to go in the office, it's because we're like filming or doing like like yeah you know yes doing i've been there with you on events. Days like that yeah. which is it's a, a lot. lot yeah it's, it's a, a lot. lot of like running around you know it's a lot of running around it's a full day yeah very very full day so i'm just on a hangover from that mm-hmm. and i literally it was like tuesday through thursday so yeah. i was just like i'm very resistant to the concept of going back in the <laughs> office like they yeah. keep talking about it uh-huh. at work like every week we have a meeting where someone brings it up and they're like trying to get all my access like up to date so they're like just you know so you're ready to go back in and i'm just like i feel like a toddler i don't like, know I'm like, I'll ever no. be ready to be no <laughs> yeah. i'm like yeah. i don't no. want to i don't I want know. i'm like dragging my feet <laughs> dragging my feet to get anything done you're like falling on the ground <laughs> like yeah no. having a full-on temper tantrum <laughs> yes let me tell you like the job that i'm i'm currently at like being able to work from home and having a boss that just basically is like as long as you get your shit done yeah like as it should be treated as an adult is actually um quite lovely (laughs) so (laughs) not being micromanaged not having to like deal with all that shit or going into the office commute all of that Mm -hmm. yeah gone from my life i will say that the people directly above me at my job are very chill like they're like Mm -hmm. we don't really want to go back full time either they're like it's if if it was up to us we wouldn't be doing this at all but it's just when you work for a big corporation people are making decisions (laughs) broadly you know without taking into account like any nuance or you know individual situations so it's like yeah, we've been doing this for two years. Do I really need to be there? Well, Clearly I'll we tell don't. you who really needs you to be there is the real commercial estate. real estate. <laughs> oh, man. Which is billion dollar like industry. Yeah. It's freaking out. So that's where it's really at. Yeah. yeah that's so the crux of this. You get back in there. Just poking poke, you poke, with a stick. Poke, poke. Hey, exactly. Go back in there. <laughs> get back in there. Get back in there. <laughs> I love our little moose bouche of eat the rich. <laughs> yeah. the top. Gotta hit the top of every episode. Yeah. A little quick sprinkle. Oh, speaking of a moose bouche and work, we are on TikTok now. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can find us at My Worst Date podcast. That's right. We are going to be creating random content. So love you get it. to see me just um speaking into the void which is one of my favorite things to yeah. do <laughs> so yeah go follow us go uh go tell us what what things you want us to see send us videos you want us to stitch and all that that fun stuff yeah please do yeah actually tiktok's been fun i um, i love tiktok it's, you know my it's ass is joy. resistant i know i know and I know. now that you're in it are you like in it yeah 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 because i actually think the short form i like I mm-hmm. like I like the the just couple minutes doing a little bit of content. It's actually fun. I actually enjoy it. Um, I actually enjoy that it's not about me having to have a full face on and feeling very produced. It's actually the yeah. opposite of <laughs> yeah, produced. Absolutely. absolutely. But you shouldn't. Actually, it's so funny because I well, we work at the TikTok building, so of course we get like snippets of TikTok information given to us in random mm-hmm. ways. <laughs> um, and one of the things was it's actually don't. Like, please don't actually. The, it's, they want, it looks like you're trying too hard. It is. I, when I notice it doesn't people perform like well. fully, fully, I'm like, skip. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I need people that are it's like not me. not real. People don't. They're, they're like. They're like. Core, that's what you need. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. They, they're very resistant to it. And it's actually very much become like a thing where people are like, um, they just don't want that. Like it's doesn't, it's not relatable. Yeah. So the more relatable that you are, the more real you, know, you look, I, the I, more, I, the look, more it's getting action. Here's the problem. I feel like it would shock people to see me at my most gremlin. Right. Like I don't even let my DoorDash person see me. <laughs> oh I get God. the notification that they've dropped off my sealed you bag of Taco your, Bell. You look at your and then door. I give it a solid five minutes <laughs> because the last thing I want is to open the door like the little fucking cave creature I am mm-hmm. and like reach out a wrinkled hand and make eye contact <laughs> with someone because I look at my worst 
I look so unlike myself. It's that bad. So oh. I'm like, I at least have to do like, I have to do a little something. Like even you two have only ever seen me looking that bad. Like a couple of times we, after after hangover days, you know, I, <laughs> I shared a like space with you in Vegas and I've seen you sans makeup fresh out of the morning. Mm. I think you're overestimating. OK, I think you're you're really going. I mean, well, unless let the TikTokers you, decide they're like, do it. oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they, they got filters on there. That's right. <laughs> you could do it as a cat. A light makeup, a little bit of freckles <laughs> yes, or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the the keys go go follow us. We're gonna be throwing a lot of stuff on there, and uh, yeah, we really appreciate you guys doing that. But um, I need to talk to Cassie right now about the thing <laughs> that you sent in the thread <gasps> earlier, Speaking which is TikTok, fucking terrifying. <laughs> um, <laughs> so speaking of tiktok i actually it's so funny because i actually got this because i have the weirdest twitter um in which twitter like is like hey so and so posted this this might be interesting to you and i'm like what (laughs) and it's always like the most random stuff this one however was a tweet by bell rideau and it said, not this girl thinking she was dreaming and hearing voices. And it was actually her boyfriend's mom standing over her while she was asleep talking about how she wanted to harm her. Why? So it's from TikTok. And this girl is at Rosie Duh. It's R-O-S-I-D-U-H. And she did the butterfly in the sky. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And it's the writing over top is when I downloaded an app to hear myself snore at night. Okay. I need to talk about that because... Every other ad is literally that ad where it's like, listen to yourself. My TikTok, yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. that ad where it's like, oh, you can find out what you were doing. And it's like literally people's recorded voice of them talking to themselves. And she's like, I, I just wanted to know if I snore. And- never seen this before. Oh, you're kidding. No. Okay. Well, anyway, so she got this app and it said, but I ended up hearing a voice saying it wants to unalive me and saying hateful things. So I think it's a ghost and i put a camera in my room but it turns out it's my boyfriend's mom coming in my room saying these things while i slept while hovering over me that's she the what in the fucking paranormal activity is that there's a picture yes (gasps) oh my god literally a picture of her mother well not mother-in-law but her boyfriend's mom standing over her What's well, wrong she's with her? Sleeping. I'm sorry. Okay, I need a so, story time about like. Okay, she's story time. Okay, it. great. I'm going to tell you. So she does story time it, and so she's like trying to explain to people like, you know, she's really like she just got out of prison. <gasps> oh, okay. And For so, what? Why? So she didn't say, but she was like, "It's not that bad." Okay, is what she said. Okay, she said she was given ten years, but was got out in three. She says that she's like, I don't want to turn her in or do anything because she's like really trying to get her life back together. And I'm like, honey, baby. girl, you can't stay there. You can't You're in danger there. She yeah. can sleep there because it's her motherfucking house. <gasps> Oh, no, 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 yes. no, no, no. So but, this, uh, 20, this listen, woman is going to do listen, that in your own fucking in my house. house? She is 21 years old and she has the pl- it's her place that her boyfriend lives in with her. And so they were taking care of mom's kids, like as young as two, like her kids, 21, her she's fucking 21. house. And that's part of the other thing where she was talking about. She's like, I also don't want to turn her in because I don't want to fucking raise these damn kids. She she loves these kids. Yeah. To be fair, she's like, I love these kids, but these are her kids to take care of. Wow. And I also don't want her to have to go back to prison because she's like, then what's happening to these kids? She's this like, I'm 21. A terrible situation. It's a lot. And then so, and she's like a sweet baby angel. She's young. She's 21. Like she is like the 21 of 21. The audacity. This and she's like, I didn't tell my boyfriend either because she's like my boyfriend mean and he would definitely send her back to prison. Oh, dude. Some, oh something. This is a powder That's cake. scary. This is a motherfucking yes. powder yes. cake. But she's also, she hasn't said anything to the mother-in-law. So the mother-in-law doesn't, or her boyfriend's mom doesn't know she even knows. And her boyfriend's mom is super fucking nice to her in oh, real life. She's that's like, oh, even scarier. Scary. Yes. Right? She's like, she's like, I haven't said anything because she's really fucking nice to me. Also, she's I'd be like, very nervous don't putting this anything. on the internet. I, she was like, I didn't think anybody'd see it. And it's like, she's like, 
Okay. So you just you just said something that jogged my memory for another mother in law story, which okay. was don't eat anything. <gasps> yes, don't we, eat anything. Don't we eat got anything. Said something. I cannot find who sent it. So <gasps> yes, I know yes. exactly what you're talking so about. So I had to look it up again, but it's it does sound like creepy pasta. But it, it does. But okay, so this woman was like, you know, I met my husband. We got married pretty quickly. We were already married by the time I met his parents. Mm-hmm. His parents, and specifically his mother, was like very unhappy about meeting her. Like just was like, seemed like she didn't like her, was very like cold and kind of like distant to her. And then she started noticing that every time she went over there, she would get sick. Like after eating. And they would stop there on their way to like some place. Like they'd be going camping and they'd Mm -hmm. be like, oh, let's stop at my parents. We'll stop here and then go camping or whatever. And it was always on their way to something. Very outdoorsy couple. So it was always like on their way to something else. And yeah, it wouldn't happen so much if it was like something else was going on. But anytime they were leaving there to go do something, she would get sick. And so she was like, I think my mother-in-law is poisoning me. Oh my God. So one time they go over there, she switches the meals and with her husband yeah. and her husband gets really sick. And so she's like, okay, this is the proof I need. Yeah. So she tells her husband, like, I think your mom is poisoning me. Here's the proof I have. And he loses his shit and he goes over and confronts the mom. She shoots him. Yeah. Holy she shit. She shoots and kills him. She, and she said that she was doing it. She was poisoning her, but she was doing it to get them out of going going out places alone because his first wife, the husband's first wife had died camping or like died hiking with him. And so she didn't trust him to be alone with her. Holy shit. Her own son. Yeah. yeah. So he was, she was poisoning her daughter-in-law to keep her from, from going. going. Wow. Out. Yeah. And it does totally sound like a creepy pasta, it but does. I was like, <gasps> and it also sounds like maybe not. I mean, could we've told what if he, she's been the culprit this whole fucking time. We've we've told you know more wild stories on this podcast. Yeah. So and he's dead. He can't say he ain't, can't say anything now. Oh my god, I'd... he can't contradict that. Yeah. Well, anyway. Wow. <laughs> well, bad bad mother in laws is definitely a trope <laughs> yeah, right. in this society, along with the dopey husband that can't mm-hmm. accomplish anything oh, and the man. nagging wife. Oh my god! It's giving me the every love. Everybody loves Raymond. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) I that is one of my, or it was when it was on Netflix. Like that is one of my problematic comfort shows. Mm. Like I would put that show on just to have like a good old dose of like '90s nostalgia in sitcom format. But it really has like all the tropes in in the worst way. Yeah, in the worst way where you're supposed to be like super like sympathetic or empathetic towards Raymond, but like he's. The a worst. terrible husband. <laughs> yes. And like poor Deborah is Literally, just trying to hold it down. Deborah's and, like, the only redeemable character in the I know. And she show. takes like so much shit the whole time. And then like, yeah, his mother, her mother in law, Marie, on that show, Doris Roberts, who loved Amazing Doris actress. Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but she's terrible. Like she's terrible. And I'm just like, I really feel like they're not like they'll be like, she's terrible, but also she's really caring deep down and yeah. just loves her She's family just quirky and i'm like oh i would look i'd be like raymond we need to move yeah the boundary um, situation will leave you. <laughs> yeah exactly i'm like if i if my mother-in-law was coming in just unannounced no. all the time like that's not and then unable to accept even a tiny bit of criticism or any boundaries right at all yeah without getting like passive aggressive and like oh just absolutely terrible seriously so if you've never seen that show they live across the street I hate from that. from his parents and they have no boundaries they're generally like pretty awful and yeah i would tell raymond i'd be like look man we let's have move across to the move. country yeah we have to move or else i will take the kids and i will leave you <laughs> yeah it's too much it's too much so yeah. i think i think we need to fmk Bad mother. Bad yeah. Yeah. Well, she needs to be one because every time I think of like a, a mother-in-law situation where oh, I, I would walk away, I think of that. Well, this isn't so much like a bad mother-in-law situation. Let's as do bad much mothers, as... bad mother-in-laws. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you have brought up earlier 
Mommy Dearest. And I have a special connection to that mm. movie. Because oh, your name is Christina? I'm named after, after that movie. You've told me this <laughs> so many times. And it's like brand new information yeah. every single time. Yeah. Because I'm like, surely not. Christina like, is not a, a family name. Like, it's not it's not common or anything. Um, it was just something that uh, my mom thought was pretty after that movie came out. And so funny. That's, that's what I'm named Deeply upsetting. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like the scariest mom of all time. Yes, like no more wire hangers. The scariest. The scariest. Truly. I mean, and that like I rewatched it recently, and that movie has become such a campy, like cult classic. Mm-hmm. But genuinely, that scene if if she wasn't overacting to the point of just like it being ridiculous, it would be so terrifying well, like yeah it's just it's it's so i mean that that movie is is campy but it does depict that abuse of when you have like a narcissistic parent yeah. you know mm-hmm. how fucking terrifying it is because one moment they're like all about you and like yeah. lovey dovey and then the next minute is uh, like you're just walking on eggshells all the time it's yeah. terrifying also mm. always makes me think of like hey remember there was a time in the not too distant past where you could just like buy children if you had Oof. enough money yeah like that's what she did she was just like i'm just gonna buy some buy kids, kids. yeah like, horrible that's an adopted child i feel I feel very I feel kind of way about very that. conflicted about there's this whole tons thing. of stories of that mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it was a whole thing specifically in the Ooh. 30s it's not good yikes all right so because we we're talking specifically about mother-in-laws i obviously the first thing that came to my mind was the movie monster, monster in law yes which is jane fonda uh-huh so it's and J-Lo, Je- right? Jennifer Lopez, yeah. Michael Vartan, who I love. Me too. I mean, he's so I hot. I've never heard of this movie. Monster in Wow. No. Oh. I mean, it's not. I feel we got to do this for Tainted Love for sure yeah. at some point. It's not good. It's not a no, good movie. No, it's not a good movie. <laughs> no. yeah. I didn't think so. Just no. <laughs> given the brief yeah. snippet that yeah. I've heard. Um, <laughs> You're like the title certain. pretty much is giving yeah. me a, a clue. But yeah, I'm going to go with Jane Fonda in that movie and... Just know that she is a monster in law. She basically okay. tries to break them up, and that's her mission. Like right, and she's the type I can't remember because I haven't seen it like since it came out, and I probably mm-hmm. watched it on like TBS. Sure, on yes, <laughs> you know. Um, but she's like your classic. Yeah. no one is good enough for my son. Kind yes. of monster in law. Yes, Ooh. right. Okay, so you've got some different, but at least it's well acted because it's Jane Fonda. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Doris Roberts is like slightly different. There's like a little sprinkling of that, but it's also that like it's passive aggressive. Oh, That's which the mar- main thing. Martyr to the martyr. Oh, oh my yes. god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I know what I'm gonna do. Oh, so okay. you got the narcissist, the martyr, and the, the... maniac. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Jane yeah. Fonda. <laughs> I'm going to marry Jane Fonda. Because, yeah, yeah, no, honestly, like, you know, because it's a movie. So, you know that at the end, she's going to come turn a new leaf. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're going to find a common ground. That's right. They're going to come to terms. music's going to swell. That's right. Uh So, uh, for that reason alone, I have to. I have to marry marry Mm -hmm. Jane Fonda. Plus, it's Jane Fonda. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's a no-brainer. Beautiful. Right. I can't, don't think I can deal with Mommy Dearest. (laughs) <laughs> oh god but i then don't you know you have to fuck marie oh <laughs> which <laughs> nope just think about nope. it nope <laughs> nope <laughs> nope <laughs> i hate all this awful god <laughs> no um, i gotta uh, hey you know a narcissist can pretend for a night literally, that's right have honestly a, there yeah. you go i that's exactly right I'm in gonna, fact I'm, i bet she's not bad I'm gonna fuck mommy dearest. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> god damn it. And but I can't. I cannot no. with Maria's awful. I to we know you, how much I hate passive aggressive. You yeah, you, you can't would handle never. it. You would Ooh, never. You would that's, never. Could you imagine? No. 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 Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't fuck with Marie either. Specifically because that kind of attitude and that kind of it is very prevalent in my family. The mm. martyr, the passive mm-hmm. aggressive, feels very midwestern to me. Hate it. <laughs> it I'll feels, just give the silent treatment. And yeah, so that, that like guilt the guilt mm-hmm. the shamey and yeah. that kind of thing it's just like it's a little though, so too a- too close to too. home <laughs> but um but yeah i think maybe because it it feels so familiar i don't know maybe i feel like i can marry it because i feel <gasps> like i have found a way to navigate both cassie and i had the biggest deepest inhale 
gasp. Well, but, okay. I believe that was a gasp. It was. It I was know, a gasp. I know how to, I know it. It's familiar to me and I know how to navigate it. Do you know what I mean? Sure. I know how to combat it. I know how to shut it down. I know how yeah. to. Yeah. And to be honest. My way to shut it down isn't nice though. No. Mine's awful. Mine's to the point. Mine's confrontational. But here's well, the that's thing. That's what someone that, like that needs, I think. I, oh, maybe. I, I, I understand that people have their different coping mechanisms. Yeah. We're not all perfect. Like the way that yeah. I cope with shit, it certainly isn't perfect. So I'm not going to try to make someone feel bad for the way that for whatever reason they've chosen to navigate life, True. you know? So passive aggressive though comes off so bullshit and phony to me. And I hate it so much mm-hmm. because it's just a lot like, of it comes from fear. I can't, yeah. but to me, I'm like, if you fucking don't like me, you're going to goddamn tell me. It's not really I'm about you, though. That's <laughs> that's what's yeah. sad about passive aggressive is all about their own fear and insecurity. Well, yeah, as a people pleaser who mm-hmm. does not like confrontation, mm-hmm. like there's a, sometimes it's just easier to it doesn't have to come out as like a passive aggressive or like guilt behavior, but it is just easier to swallow, swallow, swallow everything and carry everything, and yep. that can come across as martyring behavior yep. because mm-hmm. that's just how you cope with things and sure. so i don't yeah i don't think that there's a right way or a wrong way um i think that there are ways that are damaging to people and if that's the case then you need to seek help like yeah. marie should be in therapy oh, no god. shit oh, my like, god. i'm yeah. like she's <laughs> the way that she is you know yeah. especially with her daughter-in-law but none of these options are good because none. jane fonda I, i'll tell you i i hate a passive aggressive martyr Mm -hmm. but i also hate mom i hate that emotional incest with like mom where they're like they're like my baby boy my baby my sweet baby boy no one's ever gonna be good good enough enough. yeah that shit that's weird would be i couldn't be married to that (laughs) no because i'm just like oh i do feel like chris's mom probably feels like he is god's gift from the angels above but does she make you feel badly no she fucking loves me are you kidding yeah that's fine then. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. yeah, you should love your kids and yeah. you should think that they're, you know, yeah. something. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you should, you know, be kind to other people. So I'm going to marry Doris. We're going to, you know, get her into therapy. We're going to watch some Brene Brown together. We're going to talk <laughs> about like healthy communication styles and boundaries and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> make her read attached. <laughs> like, just leave it on the table. Exactly. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and um then you know what um I'm, I'm gonna fuck mommy dearest too yeah you know it's uh it's jim crawford maybe you know we'll get a you know fun fun night out of it but yeah i'm not hanging around too long because no. that shit gets dangerous fast fast, fast. and very frightening yeah so. and the way they in drink out. in that movie too is just oh, like man. they're just fucking downing like tom collins like left and right yeah no thank you no um oh i mean I am also just let's just get it out of the way. I am also going to fuck Joan Crawford. Look, I mean, say what you want. The woman is a legend. I mean, she's a lot of other terrible things. Um, One night. Fine. I imagine a canopy bed, a lot of like (laughs) lots of silks, (laughs) lots of feathers, you know? Yes. Um, So satins. Yeah. Yeah. So you get in, you get out, you get on with your life. Right. right. Um, Hmm. Yeah, plus she's got kids. You don't want to hang around. <laughs> yeah. Um, bye. <laughs> um, the other two. I really think there should be a remake of, not remake of Mommy Dearest specifically, but I want to see that story in a real. Yes. Which I think is also the real Christina kind of said that, that like, yeah, I, we could do it in such a better way now. Like yeah. Take it out right. of the camp realm and actually make it like real. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I I would be interested to see it. I wonder who right? would play Joan Crawford now. That's an interesting Angelina Jolie. Oh, that Ooh. Would... Okay, but the other two, this is very hard for me because I watch Everybody Loves Raymond and I cannot stand Mm-mm. Marie. Like she drives me up a wall. But Jane Fonda. Mm-hmm. That's gonna push it ahead. That's gonna inch it ahead for me. It's like it's ju- it's simply because it's, it's it's simply Jane Fonda. It's Jane Fonda, and also mm-hmm. I feel like maybe like if he's not there, physically present, maybe it would be fine. Like so, it's bad on holidays when her son comes to visit, and I'm like, oh yeah. But mm-hmm. um, when he's not around, we can have like nice vacations, and she's probably somewhat normal. 
So yeah, I'm going to do that. And again, it's a movie, so she probably changes her tune by the end, right? Yeah. What happens? <laughs> I what don't happens, remember. I what happens it. after the happily ever after, though? Cassie, she's got J Lo has to come back every year. <laughs> I think it has deal with that forever. woman. <laughs> yeah. In my mind, that is a nice tidy bow that has been wrapped up, and we're moving on. I do think that's how the movie ends. Yeah. I can't remember, but oh, it has to be. It would be I mean, very two thousand. Com- I mean, yeah, yeah, it's conflict resolution. H E A. Yeah, all day. Yeah, you, know, you gotta you gotta tie that up in a nice nifty little bow, and you just walk away from it. <laughs> walk away, wash your hands. That's right. Yes, because <laughs> even the end of Everybody Loves Raymond was not like a. It wasn't like a. Now I feel good about. I would be totally fine marrying into this family. Like still no, it's still yeah. a no for yeah. me, dog. No. Um. Okay, <laughs> that was a fun one. We have a new patron. Excellent. Yes. Yes. So I want to give a big shout out. Worsty welcome to Maddie Myers. We are so excited to have you as part of the Patreon fam. If you have any suggestions for anything that you would like to see on Patreon, any Tainted Love movies you would like us to do, please reach out and let us know. Yes, yeah. definitely. And also, you guys, don't forget to send us stories. Yes. We know that uh, the world is semi coming back to semi back to ish. Life back to life. Not that we wish bad dates upon you. No. But I'm just saying. But we know they're happening. But you know we what? We know they are. We know they are. Don't let them go to waste. Yeah. Bring them to us. Let it let us share. Commiserate together. That's right. Well, you guys want to take five and we'll come back with stories? Sounds yes. good. Okay. And we're back. All right, Christina, it's your tainted love this week, so you kick us off. Okay. I've got a really interesting one for you guys that I think we'll have some opinions on. Uh, she says, This might be a long one to follow. My best friend, a 22-year-old female, has been speaking to a guy online, 25-year-old male, for about six months. Okay. It started on a dating app and then moved on to WhatsApp. She's besotted with him. They didn't meet up for ages, not for lack of trying, but finally went on a date last weekend. They live about 70 miles from each other and neither drives, so they use public transport no, no. to get there. Immediately, no, I'm out. <laughs> no, I'm out. I'm out right away. <laughs> like, I'm like, did you have to get on a Greyhound? 70 <laughs> miles? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my train involved? Yeah. What kind of public transport? Is This must be, this is not America, because we do not have, like, no, rail. No, you rail. have to take, like, several different yeah. <laughs> forms of transport uh, they met in the middle so they only had to go 35 oh, miles okay, okay. all right that's still an la 35 is that, miles is like a million miles away I yeah like, what is what is that like magic mountain that's, or, oh it's anaheim? more than that yeah that's like that's anaheim. going to disney world that takes forever yeah or disneyland yeah yeah, yeah no um yeah. okay disney world is way more miles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a couple more a couple like, more just a few yeah. yeah okay so they met in the middle at a nice nature park, there's walks, a cafe, and it's safe because it's always busy with families. Since they were going to the park, she took her dog with her because he had shown interest in the dog during their conversations. This sounds perfect so far, minus he, the drive. He said he would love for her dog to come along. He's a black lab named Milo. Oh, He's about okay. four years old. That is so cute. I had a black lab growing up named Jamie. Oh, adorable. Jamie. I know. Labs, oh. labs are adorable. Are. I mean, all dogs are. Anyways, she was texting me throughout the date because I wanted to check on her safety. She said it was going well and they were getting along. She joked he wasn't a catfish like we'd all warned her about. Mm. Anyway, fast forward to the date being over. They're both on the train slash bus home and she texted him saying thanks for a lovely day. He took about five hours to reply. Uh, um, That's that's too many hours. Which worried her because they're usually back and forth within 10 minutes. Mm -mm. Oh, do you know the like cold sweat Mm -hmm. I would have after your first date? First date. And oh. then, yeah, exactly. Guess it's over. That's you, me. You yeah, guess it's over. <laughs> when he eventually replied, it went similar to this. By the way, my friend doesn't mind me sharing this. <laughs> Thank God. Her. Thank you for a lovely day. Him. Five hours later. Yeah. Thanks. With an oh. X. No punctuation. Um. Her. Do you think you'd want to meet up again another weekend? Him. The next day, so almost 24 hours Jesus later, Christ. he replies, yeah, maybe. What? Her. Cool. 
when are you free? Him, about three hours later. Okay. Are you going to bring your dog this time? Oh, no. Her. Is he using her for the dog? Oh, no. I don't have to. What did you have in mind? Him, fast reply. It's just you pay more attention to your dog oh, than me. Okay. Opposite of what I thought. Okay. You came to see me, <gasps> not play with your dog. I don't get why you even brought him. You okay, at, we're done. He not done, done. Ask you to? Goodbye. <laughs> Her, you said you'd love to meet him. Him. Yeah, I did, but I didn't realize he'd stop us from doing things. We could have done so much more if he wasn't there. Oh, okay. we are done. Dude. And that also, that sounds like an 18 year old, not a 25 year old. My like, that dude. is so. <laughs> we could have done stuff. She thinks it's stupid how he turned around and blamed a bad date on her dog, but she really likes him and thinks she wants to see him again. No. They have been talking again, but not making any solid plans, but she says it gives her a kind of bad feeling she can't shake. Yeah, that's a red flag. Yeah. Isn't that awful? That's a red flag. Of, you asked to bring the dog. You're going to a park. Sir. Isn't that weird? Update. He said she disrespected okay. him. All right. For paying more attention to her dog than him. You know, we should really... I'm out. We should really talk about, like, words that are red flags. Overused. Disrespect. Disrespect. <laughs> Overused. Um, immediately. Like, I'm like, oh, no. No, no, oh, no, I no. Like, if a man says you? that, you disrespected me. I am immediately, like, I uh, I get toxic masculinity vibes yeah, from that absolutely. automatically. Uh-uh. Uh, so, Ugh. yeah, she ended things with him, luckily. and Also, sorry, yeah. the dog's been in my life for a really long time, longer than you. Also, it just gives you so much insight into their character. Yeah. If you're going to be jealous of a fucking dog, yeah. my my personal dog, uh, that's just, that is the reddest of flags. Also, that says a lot about what his expectations are and how he, where he expects to be in your priorities. And that is a fucking enormous red flag. Yeah, who what? is you? I, this dog yeah, is my okay. dog. Honey, like, I love this creature. This dog relies on me. Yeah. This is my responsibility. This is my baby. This is my... Yeah, like, yeah. I... I well, so Ari, also, you can take a walk. I just think that it shows by like, yourself without my dog. <laughs> yes, it shows such a red flag because it it demonstrates such insecurity. On yeah, his that's part. right. And insecurity in the way that it manifests could be like dangerous. Um, actually, dangerous. Yeah. Also, sorry, so get out. Dogs need attention. Like they need yeah. attention, <laughs> yeah. especially you black labs. Have park. you ever been around a black lab? <laughs> yeah, it's it's. You went to a park. You went to a nature park. She talked about bringing him. You were cool with it. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, yeah. Black Labs require so much. Like, yeah. there's they have such high energy. They need to run around. You're going to be playing fetch with that dog. Sorry. This is a you problem. Yeah. Oh, also, again, who doesn't again. enjoy playing with a dog? Right. I'm like, yeah. oh, I get to meet somebody I've been chatting with. And they brought this adorable animal. Yeah. To be yeah. honest. I would probably be paying more attention to that's the dog. That's right. I'd be like, new dog that I've never met. Like, yes. We're best friends now. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to win over this dog. I don't yeah, know. Exactly. I actually don't like, give a shit about the human. <laughs> I don't even know what they look like. Oh, my God. I have to tell you. So we have um, our, our neighbor dog. His name's Beverly. Her name's Beverly. And mm -hmm. she is like a fucking enormous. She is like the size of a Great Dane, but curly hair. Oh. So she's like a, like a poodle Great Dane looking <gasps> dog. She's oh, that's beautiful. Amazing. And I love her. And her eyelashes are literally like two inches. Like cartoon fully eyelashes? two inches long. Oh. She's beautiful. And I love her. And she's a super lovey dog. I don't know what her owner's name is. Oh, I was going to say the same thing. We have Ace that lives next yes. door to us. And then we also have George. I'm like, ask me who the humans are. I don't no know. idea. Love their dogs and say hi to them and oh. call them by their names. Yes. And I'm like, oh, hey, dude, what's up? <laughs> like, yeah. I have no idea who the <laughs> I know actual <laughs> owners are. I know Beverly. <laughs> the end. For a by minute the there, uh, Cassie, I thought that that was just going to be a Beverly shout out. Like, I thought you were just like, this is what this dog looks like. And I love her, period. <laughs> the end. Shout out to Beverly on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like, she, <laughs> Paul Cass. Uh, she does not listen, I don't think. Uh, but how awesome is it that uh, Beverly and Rose live? I mean, it's Aww. like a retirement home for dogs. I love my, it. My oh, man. I had a friend who had a dog named Phyllis. Mm. so cute <laughs> mm. so great just yes i love old i names. need like a dorothy mm -hmm. i need like a you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah a, a match yeah okay <laughs> right. anyway okay this one just made me laugh it's 2009 <laughs> connect with a guy right <laughs> sorry okay. already we're, the, we're there <laughs> yeah okay we've set the scene connect with a guy on plenty of fish 
He picks me up at my house. We head to an ice cream shop. I love that <laughs> the way she writes is just one sentence at a time. Um, well, I mean, that's all stories. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Watching you come to the realization like, at the same time as you say it. You know it. what I mean? It's like, it's 2009, yeah. period. Connect with a guy on Plenty of Fish, period. Yes. <laughs> not, not a lot of compound quick. No, sentences quick. and stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. We head to an ice cream shop, <laughs> period. He has just come back from army basic training and the topic of conversation will only be about what physical stuff he has learned how to do there. Great. I try to change the topic to literally anything, anything. other than how fast he can climb something <laughs> and hand-to-hand fighting tactics, but to no avail. We exit the ice cream shop. He puts me in a headlock. <gasps> Sir! The patrons Honey. inside silently watch me flail about trying <gasps> to escape. Oh, I no. I'm going fucking right. Won. The police are pulling yes. up immediately yes. because I'm already I'm, I'm already uh-huh. on my phone. Yeah. Listen, I'm not the one who calls the police for anything. But for that, yeah, you heard him talking to her about like hand to hand combat tactics. And, and you then already I had the phone you, in your hand. You were waiting. I see you in the parking mm-hmm. lot in a head. Mm-hmm. You got her. We oh, got yeah, I know. I'm like in the coffee Sir. shop. I'm calling the cops. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm. He releases me from the headlock, explains how I should have escaped his hold. <laughs> We I, had. I thought I was going I to a date, not a crop dog class. Not. Jesus Christ! I did not know I was going to self defense classes today. Who knew? We head to the movies. We sit down in an empty theater. Oh no! He cranes his neck, thinks he hears something, leaves to go check it out. Oh, okay, <laughs> Rambo. <laughs> right? Yeah, he's got the like this dark, guy. like yeah. smudge under the eyes. He comes up over the seats, <laughs> like looking both ways, ducks oh. back down. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Ten minutes go by. I hear... <laughs> Ten <laughs> minutes goes by. He's gone. It's a while. He's checking out every seat. Uh, oh, yeah. He's going all Jack Reacher on this oh, AMC. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Ten minutes go by. I hear something on the floor to my left. Jesus Christ. He's army crawling toward me no! on his stomach. <laughs> about you know to grab my oh. ankles and scare me. <laughs> Sticky. Those Ooh. floors always <laughs> are. Disgusting. I have never he been has in one. Gum. <laughs> Pop. He's got popcorn. Someone stuck semen. To him. Oh, oh no! It's just always mm-hmm. sticky on the mm-hmm. floor. He's on the <laughs> army crawling <laughs> towards her ankles. Oh no! no. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I just the image of that, like turning oh. around, and it's just like he's like a snake, just <laughs> no! towards you. I hate this <laughs> so much. Oh, dude! Oh, we God. finish the movie and leave. Never see each other again. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> no. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Why? Wow. Why? Oh my god! Whew. All right, so I'm going to start writing with a trigger warning, especially if you're a guy. Okay. Okay, because this involves danger in your private zones. Oh, oh no. no! Proceed with caution. Yes, your yes. swimsuit area. In your swimsuit. <laughs> Point well, to where on the door. <laughs> I almost really want that to be the title of the episode. <laughs> your, your swimsuit area. <laughs> so yes, um, men especially, this will involve your swimsuit. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, sorry. All right, I'm going to go ahead. <clears throat> so here we are. My first post, and it had to be a good one to start. I have many bad dating stories, but this one, well... You'll see. Ooh. It all started with the beloved Tinder. Since deleted, will probably reappear, no doubt, when I'm born. Yeah. yeah. So, as always, I started to, with a swipe and a match. Unusually, the conversation flowed and numbers were exchanged. We spoke an awful lot before the meeting. And so the actual date was really easy. Drinks flowed. And lo and behold, we went back to mine and carried on the night. I was feeling a bit frisky. Girls got needs and all. We had deep conversation and I thought, hmm, this one might have potential. He'd also told me about his dick was massive and I mm-hmm. needed to see this shit for myself. Mm-hmm. But then I accidentally sharded. Wait. Oh, took a wait. Whoa. A quick left. Whoa. We were on the freeway and now it's. <laughs> She sharted when, where, how. I thought I was letting a discreet part out, but no, I followed through. It's okay. I sidewalked upstairs and quickly, methodically washed my arsehole and had a change of clothes. 
Don't know why that happened, but situation averted. Made some excuse to put on some comfy clothes. Fast forward, and also, we are in the bedroom. Can I just say that trying to discreetly <laughs> fart around a stranger is always you like, that. that's nerve wracking in itself. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, excuse yourself. Be like, Move. oh, I just need to. Well, um, yeah, it's, it's always going to backfire gamble. It's gonna, on it's, you. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're playing with fire. Mm-hmm. You're, you're gambling. You're rolling mm-hmm. the dice. Yeah. And she lost. She, she lost time. that bet. <laughs> Every time I've wanted to discreetly fart, it has been a tragic <clears throat> yeah. case. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And she, oh, yeah. Usually it turns out to be, yeah. It's either louder than you expected mm-hmm. or it's or not. Or it smelly. Horrible. Oh, dude. <laughs> You're just like, God damn. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> what did I eat? What have I done? All right. So fast forward and we're in the bedroom having a fumble. He was correct. His dick was massive. Okay, so for once, so then he told the truth about himself. I'm stood facing the wall, and things are happening, and all of a sudden he says, "Is that blood?" Now I thought, "Fuck, has he perforated my cervix?" <laughs> but no, it was his dick oh. bleeding to death all over oh. my brand new <gasps> carpet. Why? Wait, she went to carpet first. She's like. <laughs> she's she, like, does she carpet. have like an IUD string or something like that that cut his oh, dick up? Oh, I don't oh know. Oh my god! So with my job, I'm pretty shit hot on first aid. I was absolutely out of my depth here. He'd snapped his bloody banjo. Oh. Either I have a vice-like vagina, two kids, so doubt it, or razor blades up there. But I can't work out how this happened. Maybe he didn't moisten me up. <laughs> So now I have blood everywhere. <gasps> and the man who has got back into my bed with a broken bathroom area. Call an ambulance. And all I can think about is my carpet. No. Oh. <laughs> Honey. Dude. This poor man is losing blood it's by so the <laughs> minute. And you're like, <laughs> but my carpet, it's new. Oh. Subsequently, I spent days Googling how to remove blood from my carpet oh. so much so that I started panicking. Oh. But if the police were ever to get a hold of my phone, they would think I have a body buried. So there we go. Never saw him again. And I broke his I dick bet. and shat myself. Lovely job. I wow. Bet. So I was like, I have a follow up question. I, I said I actually have approximately a million questions because I I res- m- messaged her and was like, "Hey, do you care if I share the story?" And she's like, "She said, well, I'm assuming his said dick is still broken. It was last Saturday that this happened. <gasps> oh my god!" And she said, "Honestly, to God, I have no idea what happened. Carpet's fixed, though. Great. I was worried about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's giving vagina dentata." It's yes. giving teeth, oh! right? Like yes. I'm like, oh no, oh, no. I that's do, wild. I do know that I was with a guy one time, and if they're very, very large and they're bumping up <gasps> there against your cervix, there is that fucking string that hangs down that they can feel, and that oh. could possibly. I'm thinking, yeah, that's the only thing I can think of that would have like cut or it something. It makes me feel pricked. like physically nauseous. Like, like she said, it was like broken. <gasps> <gasps> But wow. how would it be bleeding if it was broken? Dude, I have a I have a lot of questions. I do too. Wow. Well, wow. that was upsetting. I didn't even know that could happen. Wow. Oh, yeah, you can break your dick for sure. You wow. can. And actually usually it happens in I've heard reverse cowgirl. <gasps> Like, oh, uh-huh, 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 like, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Oh, yeah, just, I can't imagine yeah. the crack oh. that that would make. Oh. I mean, it's not like an actual bone in there, but that's like, it's I mean, that's that's still, what cartilage or it makes me feel like it sounds like whenever you use one of those snap bracelets. Oh, you know I mean? oh. <laughs> <laughs> it does that like when you like you know oh my god no. Oh. oh no oh god i heard Sorry. that well <laughs> wow jesus christ that, well we gotta take we should take a break from that <laughs> yes let's take Ooh. five and then we'll come back with the tainted love sounds good oh and we're back yeah um so i have the Thanks, tainted Keegan. love You're welcome this uh this week and i'm usually like i like to find like silly wacky like off the wall yeah Yeah, off the wall or at least that has an element that's kind of like 
we we realize a lot of these are still murder They're and there's still nothing crime. funny about yeah. like yeah. that but um i had a pretty heavy one last week so mm-hmm. well this one is um is not silly or wacky oh. it's actually probably one of the most terrifying stories oh that my I've god ever heard and we're gonna get into it but this is the story of richard wade farley and laura black Wow. So I got a lot of my information from Murderpedia, an article from the LA Times. Um, so we're just going to dig into it. And I'm going to scary stories, uh, you guys, because, yeah, I, I definitely think this is probably the most frightening tale that I've ever told. It oh, personally wow. scares Oof. me the most. Okay. So. so were you scary stories? Was that a trigger warning? It, yes. Um, there's nothing really specific to trigger warning except for um stalking and then of course oh murder so right. mm, okay yes keegan's favorite mm-hmm. yeah in the 1980s esl electromagnetic systems labs incorporated was a premier defense contractor and landmark in the electronics industry located in silicon valley with a modern office complex in sunnyvale ESL was one of the first tech firms that populated the area south of San Francisco. Richard Wade Farley was a software technician optimistic about his career prospects. He began his job at ESL after leaving a 10-year stint in the Navy. Born in Texas in 1948, Farley led a lone, solitary life. Not married, no kids, no criminal record. He's pretty unremarkable. That is, until... April of 1984, when a pretty 22-year-old named Laura Black started a job at the company. He would later say, I think I fell instantly in love with her. It was just one of those things, I guess. Hmm. Laura, for her part, didn't even notice the quiet older man (sighs) at first. She was just excited to begin her career at somewhere so prestigious. So, like, he's... 38 or so at this time in his late 30s and she's 22 just starting oh. baby job get her so yeah. he's how old 30 he's 38 uh, she's 22 this was in they met in 84 he was born in 48 can you do math 36 he yeah. is 36 at this point but it would only take about a month for richard to come out of the woodwork he began by calling her desk phone a few times a day no no I actually I hate that already. This is this is what got me about this story. It's so when I first started at Shadowbox the very first day. There was this kid that used to work here and I won't like put his name out. He wasn't like a big part of the company, but he just instantly gave me a bad vibe. And in his first conversation to me, he's like, "You you want to go camping this weekend?" He asked me to go camping. No. I it's terrifying to me. Like, You're like to still, this today. Day. Yeah. still today. Still no. today. I'm like, that is the weirdest thing. I, I won't it, even go hiking with you no. on the first date, my dude. No. I don't know you. No. But yeah, like the first day I just started and already like, uh, it's just, it's just mm. weird. Like, what kind of person is like, yeah, sounds good. I'd love to go away f- <laughs> like from civilization with you for Listen, a couple of nights. You know, I'm, the queen of bad decisions and i love camping I love i'd camping have been like yeah too, let's go but with a stranger with someone you just if met I got a at your new job yeah, yeah. No, if i i feel like you got like an actual vibe yeah no. yeah i mean that's the thing yeah. yeah yeah anyway but also like okay so now you just started a job okay so i'm, I'm like reading this story and I'm like, it's impossible for me to not put myself in Laura's shoes. Uh-huh. Right? You start this new job. You're super excited. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm working in tech doing yeah. this thing. And then I've got this older coworker just keeps calling my desk. It's weird. And, is and he it's calling also the and- 80s. <laughs> so everything's creepier. <laughs> yes. um, yeah. <laughs> was he talking to her when he called her? Or was he just doing that creepy like calling and hanging up? No, he's talking to her. He's calling. Like, We're How's in your the day same going? office. How are it you? It would be less weird if you came over here like, yeah. than calling my office phone. That's very strange. Yeah. Well, Laura was polite. Yeah, she there you make, go. She didn't want to make a scene. It's your job, it's, which I can totally relate. Exactly. Like you, you feel mm-hmm. like women are conditioned to be polite, period. Yes. But like at your job. Yeah. And she's, it's the 80s. And yep. it's like. And she's a young woman. A young woman. Mm-hmm. 
in a male dominated industry. This is a man's you know, world. This is like tech kind of thing. So she's just being polite to the older gentleman that keeps calling her. She's like, ha ha ha. No, no, thanks. Like I'm, I'm good. The kind of thing. So when that didn't work, Richard had to get creative. He somehow lied and tricked HR into getting her home address and started writing her letters. How do you trick HR into such a thing? Like I know. You. I'm like, I need to know. Someone wasn't doing their job. That's not a 2022 20, HR department. I'll tell you that. Uh-uh. Much. You ain't getting. Yeah. So they, he basically, he got her her house address, starts writing her letters, starts leaving her little like treats and trinkets at her desk and stuff too, like homemade bread and stuff. Can you imagine no. how fucking weird that would be if your coworker was like, and she's right, just totally someone, trying to be like someone you've expressed no interest in, none. right? Because like, yes, the conversation changes if like there are like mutual flirty exchanges or right. whatever. If you've talked to me about your bread and I'm like, Oh, I'd love to try it sometime. And yeah. you leave me some bread at my desk. That's, Totally different than you are. There is no reciprocation. There's no reciprocation, none. and you're relentless. Like, Ugh. no, yeah. So, yeah, he would write her letters at a rate of about two a week. What the- he would hang out for hours at a Seven Eleven across from her home to get a glimpse of her, and then would tail her around town on errands. What could you possibly have to say to me in two letters a week? <laughs> Especially when I'm giving you nothing, nothing honey. I'm in return, you nothing. You're just telling what me about your day. You're just you writing. Possibly, it's just your diary entries. Ripping them out, fold them up. <laughs> I just it makes me think of that sketch from Saturday Night Live where they're like, "Dearest Barbara," and she's like, "Sounds good," you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I really feel like you should have sent me more. <laughs> he even joined a primarily women's aerobics class just no. to be near her. <laughs> So he, oh, imagine so your creepy co-worker. 80s. He's got a headband on. It's right? the 80s. He's got wristbands on and like fucking leg warmers. <laughs> and he's standing in the back of the class. I see this as a movie and this is played by John Shear for it's sure. So scary. I think it, it is a movie too. <gasps> I have to see um, who plays who, but I, I know it is a TV movie. I feel like it's like John Shear or John Shear. Wow. Paul Shear. Oh, you know oh, what I mean? Shear, I know yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I could see him as this character with like this headband on. <laughs> to, yeah. Like working out. that is probably the most like ugh, of everything you've said so far, well, because yeah. I'm like, you're at an aerobics class and you turn around and like this guy, this guy's here too. Like well, you're also on all of my, space. all of my yeah. space. Yeah. Exactly. It's one thing. Cause like, usually like if work, if something about work sucks, you can leave it at work. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now like, that no. sucky part of work is, is now literally you around you everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Aerobics class. Mm. Laura continued to be polite and tried to easily let down the much bigger than her, much older than her, Farley, telling him she did not return his feelings. But that only seemed to egg Richard on. Why? Oh, of course. Yeah, you just got to try harder. Mm-hmm. You just have to try harder. Richard at work was all about Laura. He managed to steal and copy her desk keys. So whenever he could, he would go and rifle through her shit to learn more about her, where she went and who she was. I'm like, no coworkers were like, what are you doing in Laura's desk? No coworker was like, bro, like, what the fuck are you doing? Nobody says anything to him. Okay. How, how high is he in this company? I'm curious. He's not. That's the thing. Yeah. They were saying later he's a software tech and he got the job because of his Navy experience. And it was one of the the lower positions that they gave people without a college um, degree. degree. So he's not high up in the company. He wasn't super um, senior to yeah. her either. He'd only been there for about a year before she joined. So, so it, I mean, so definitely somebody should have been like, it's not like the boss was going through it, her stuff. And exactly. like, it's like literally it was some literally dude. Right. somebody in a different department would just like go the through fuck? her desk, leave stuff on her desk, all kinds of shit. And like, nobody's saying anything. Okay. So she manages finally around like, the holidays, December of 1984, to be like, I'm going to take a vacation. I'm going to go home mm. to my parents' house in Virginia over the holidays. Well, Richard's able to find the address yeah, and write to her, her. there. Oh, he writes to her. Oh, Come on. Do you know what, my man? We've, we've talked about this before, but like a letter like that 
comes to my parents' house and my dad sees oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, you're in trouble. Guess who's coming back with me? Exactly. <laughs> he's on that plane. He's like, he's not yeah, fucking You don't around. want my dad to be on that plane. Yeah, he's, he's going to find you at around. that 7-Eleven. Mm-hmm. So, like, her parents talk to her and they convince her, like, move. Like, move yeah. your your address. Like, talk to HR you or whatever. Girl. But, like, it, she does, and it doesn't take long for him to find her Where new address. Where is he finding this info? I'm sure he follows her. He just follows her. Yeah. He got it once from HR, but then he just, like, starts following her. Richard eventually actually starts dating another woman, and it gets serious enough where he moves her into his home, but he continues to call Laura several times a day at work and at home. What is going on with this person's brain? Like, I'm always so fascinated by, like, minds of stalkers yeah. specifically because I'm like, there is something misfiring for you to have mm-hmm. this level of obsession about this. Yeah, like, right. It's it's the, bizarre. Uh, like, erotomania. Yeah. It definitely That's, is. Wow. He leaves her little gifts on her desk when at work or approaching her on the street. Richard would often ask for a date, but inevitably would be turned aside by the gentle and polite Laura. These rejections would bring on recurring protests and endless restatements of his <sighs> limitless love for her. Sure. She did what she could to avoid him. He would then just up the ante with more phone calls, more drive bys her home, more gifts. Laura became horrified when she noticed him checking out the apartment right next no, door to no. hers i mean at this point nine one fucking one but then yeah it's the 80s useless. so what are they gonna do i mean like I, you well, gotta, doing anything you gotta move state mm-hmm. at this point i mean he twice tries to move in right next door to her so it prompts her to move again this is when uh, richard decided he could no longer take no for an answer okay and sir. his tactics and tone become aggressive His letters were full of derogatory remarks about her. His letters become threatening. The visits to her desk, her home, anywhere she went became more frequent. And Laura's life was a living hell. This motherfucker still has a job? Exactly. Like, how does he still have a job? Like, did she speak to HR? Did she talk to people at her work? Finally, after putting up with this shit for over a year in autumn of 1985. So this has been going on for a year and a half. Laura finally goes to HR at ESL. Um, A lot of things that I was uh, reading about it, like comments were like, she was 22 Mm -hmm, in this big company. First job. Didn't want to be the hysterical woman. Yeah. Mm. Didn't want to be the difficult one. Right. I mean, because you're talking immediately upon being hired. It's not like she's someone who's been there for a long time. Right. Yeah. So she she didn't want to get in trouble or or make waves because she didn't want to lose her own job. Right. Um, so she finally does go to HR. She's finally like, fuck this job. Even if I lose it, I exactly. yeah. can't deal yeah. with this. Yeah. So Richard was told he had to attend psychological counseling sessions and to stop harassing Laura if he wanted to keep his job. That's well, that'll do it. Big. That's <laughs> yeah. Big move. For, for the 80s? For the 80s? Yeah, I know. And <laughs> normally it'd be like, hey, dude, if you just couldn't if you just not stop, do that, do you mind? that'd be great. Cutting it out. That's about <laughs> it. Psychological. Of, I mean, like, that's. That's big. Yeah. 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 So although he did attend the sessions, the harassment didn't stop. It actually escalated even further. And then in 1986, he could no longer control his anger towards her rejections and began to threaten her life as well as other employees at the company saying if he got fired, he would no longer have anything to live for and he'd take everyone with him. His girlfriend at home is like, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Um, Pardon. Bye. (laughs) He told ESL that they had no right to control his relationships with other individuals. And they were like, um, what you're doing is illegal. And now you're fired. Okay, so, good. Yeah. Well, they fucking got good. rid of him. I mean, it <laughs> yeah. took like two Fuck years around to find out. Well, now that he's fired, Richard has nowhere to go. He's got from free nine time. To five. He's got nothing but mm-hmm. free time. And it, but at least you could keep your eyes on him when he was at the office with you, which is like a shitty way to think about that. But that's what we've talked about yeah. before yeah. as how sometimes it's like shitty damned if you do like, or damned if you don't. Yeah, yeah, I know you block them, but then like you have this fear in your head that you're like, where are they? At least like when they're that's unblocked, right. you can kind of like keep an eye, get a gauge, but it's shitty. So he, he, his whole life begins to crumble because he's not paying attention to anything else in his life. But Laura, like chick face moves out. Uh, yeah. 
He loses his home to foreclosure. He owes over 20K in back taxes, and he has nothing but time to stalk Laura. Again, like, what's going on? Like, what is going on in that brain where you're like, I'm willing to let every other aspect of my life fall apart? Fall apart just to focus all of my attention Jesus. on this one individual. It's and this is so somebody that has no criminal history, nothing. Se- like seemingly lived 11... a normal life up until this point. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this is terrifying to me for so many reasons. But so he calls and leaves a message to set up a date, which she ignores. She's still letting his shit go to the answering machine. But he took that as a yes and just showed up at her house. No. When she told him to go away, he took it as proof that she was playing games with him. Okay. Later, he goes back and tries for hours testing code combinations to get into her garage. Oh, my God. One of his letters to Laura at this time reads, you cost me a job. $40,000 $40,000 in equity taxes I can't pay and a foreclosure. You Yet, cost me these things. You. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not because of your fucking mm-hmm. shitty ass actions. <laughs> Yet I still like you. Why do you want to find out how far I'll go? I absolutely will not be pushed around and I'm beginning to get tired of being nice. Terrifying. I I absolutely like can't even imagine being in this position. And it's the 80s. So finally, like the last straw for Laura was in January of 1988. So she's been putting up with this for four fucking years. Wow. Nonstop daily phone calls, presence on her door. Like it's it's so you're just living in fear. You're living in fear all, all the, time. the time. And you don't even have the same. Like I saw a TikTok once. I was on TikTok and this woman who had a stalker, she like put a TikTok up of like, Oh, I'm at the bookstore. Yes. And like, this is my stock. And he approached her like in the bookstore and wow. she videoed the I whole watched, thing. I watched that thing like yeah. five times mm-hmm. because it's, it's terrifying. Just yeah. the way that he was talking to her yeah. and wow. like blocking her escape. Uh-huh. And it was in public. Yeah. Wow. In front of bookstore. other people. Yeah. And it was one of the most threatening things. And I've by the ever way, speaking seen. of moms, his mom was in the comments defending okay. her son. Yeah. Um, but like, this is the eighties. So, you don't even have that protection because yeah. his behavior did change when he realized she was shooting him. Like that was one of the mm-hmm. things in that video. And like, you don't even have that level of no protection. Like there God. is nothing you, you, you're just alone. Like, you know, yeah, you're, you're just alone. You're talking about somebody who's like, who's went to their company for help and the company, I feel like did actually something. did yeah. something, um, moved four times four fucking times to try to get away from from somebody and it's just like there's no recourse at that time to go to the the cops like even now there's really I not know. that much yeah even if she'd gone all they would do is like maybe well, he hasn't make a note of it yeah, yeah. They, they'd make a note of it and that's just in case you end up dead we'll know who did it yeah that's exactly not it. Like, yeah jesus yeah. i mean yeah I mean, in that oh. woman on TikTok, it's like she's done all the things as well. Like she's like right. she has a big dog that she brings around with her everywhere and stuff like that. But it doesn't deter. Yeah. Somebody gets it in their head like to this point. Yeah. It's it, it's terrifying. The last straw for Laura was in January of 1988, finding a copy of her house key with a note on her car from Richard. No, no. No nightmare. Yeah. Horror movie. So she immediately goes and filed a temporary restraining order against him with all of her evidence overwhelming the police. She had over 200 letters, tons of testimony, like all this different shit that she'd gotten from him so that even the cops at this point were like, yeah, Yeah. okay, (laughs) well, we'll go ahead and we're going to give you this temporary restraining order for right now. But a restraining it's, order is just a piece of fucking paper. It doesn't do anything. Doesn't do Someone shit. really wants to hurt it, you. It's, you know, February 2nd, and we're going to uh, have a hearing to make it permanent for you. Like, permanent restraining order against this guy on February 17th, 1988. So, God. on February 16th, 1988, <sighs> Richard Farley drove his motor home to the ESL parking lot. At about 3 p.m., he loaded up various guns, uh, oh. about 100 pounds worth of guns and equipment, put on an ammunition vest, inserted earplugs, and put on leather gloves. He then walked into a side door by shooting Jeez. the glass and began shooting while making a direct line to Laura's office. God. 
One man died in the parking lot as he was leaving the building. Another died behind his desk. A third was killed in the stairwell, and two men and two women were killed in a second-floor hallway. Jesus Christ. Hearing the commotion, Laura slammed and locked the door in her office as he approached. He punched a shotgun round through the door and then was able to get in, shooting twice more with the shotgun, missing the first time but shattering Laura's shoulder and tossing her back. Then he exited. He moves on. Laura did manage to make it to an adjoining office and then outside to safety. Jesus. Meanwhile, the rampage would continue with Richard shooting at computers and whoever came into his path. All in all, seven people lost their lives that God day. Damn. And four were wounded, including Laura. He finally surrendered for a sandwich and told police he only meant to scare Laura and was actually going to commit suicide in front of her. But then why did he put on the protective vest? That's right. That's what you, I thought. No, I was you like, didn't. No, also, you didn't. he found her and then left. Yeah. yeah. So that would that have been your, your time. Plan. And also, you've already shot a bunch of people before you even did, get to her. Did you just say that he surrendered for a sandwich? Yes. Yeah, he was he was holed up in there for like five hours. Oh, Jesus. And so finally, they were able to get him to surrender so that he could have a sandwich because he got hungry. This motherfucker right here. Yeah. All that time to have... Mm. He told the police that the more she tries to push me away, the more I try not to have her push me away. And the next day, family court commissioner so awarded works. the permanent <laughs> restraining order. But she was fighting back tears, saying that it's symbolic, but pieces of paper can't stop bullets. That's right. On October 21st, 1991, Richard Farley was found guilty of seven counts of capital murder and four additional felonies and was later sentenced to death by the gas chamber. He is still in San Quentin prison to this day. Wow. Laura did go back and worked several years more at ESL. Oh, I yeah. don't feel like I would, you know. Right. <laughs> I don't feel like I could. Like, yeah. I feel like right. I would have so much trauma from that experience. Oh, my God. You know? Yeah, PTSD alone. Yeah. We, Not, a lot of people were saying that that was like one of the things that made ESL like keep their reputation was because like, the fact that Laura did when she finally went to them, they acted on things and supported her. Mm -hmm. And then she went, yeah, felt, it obviously looked. felt comfortable enough with the company to go back. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know if I could give him what happened at the yeah. place, yeah. but you know, I, I don't have any thing to say wrong about ESL actually. Mm -hmm. from yeah. the Story. It but. seems like they definitely did. Yeah. Not their fault, but I, again, you're, it's not, because of the place of business, it's because of the, the trauma associated that, with that place. That's yeah. exactly, yeah. That's exactly mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But this case, along with the tragic murder of Rebecca Schaefer, which we've told mm -hmm. on this, mm -hmm. led to the very first anti-stalking laws in California and the nation. Wow. And that is the terrifying story of God. Richard Wade Farley and Laura Black. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Like fucking goosebumps. That is. It's terrifying because oh, the you, thing, it, you didn't do anything. She didn't, didn't do, do anything. anything. Yeah. She did everything right. She just gently, politely, and she would tell him, like, I do not reciprocate these feelings. I am not interested. Like, very gently, but saying those words. But and firm, he still yeah. was like, no, you do, though. Like, But the yeah. thing is that I was reading this other thing about um, they're struggling about labeling it as erotomania because most of those cases are like people that fall in love with people that they believe are secretly in love, in with, love them. with them back. Yeah. yeah. Richard Black knew yeah. or Richard Farley knew that Laura didn't love him. Hmm. He just felt like he, he was trying could, to get her he to could love get him. her to yeah. do it. Yeah. He could yeah. get her to do it. Yeah. So they they have classified him as having a form of sure. erotomania, but yeah. Because yeah. many times, like, these people haven't even met them, and they're just certain that there is a relationship there. Right. And you're like, you've never even met this person. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. guy has met her, and she told him for four years, like, not interested, dude, like, at all. And he mm. just could not accept that. That's what makes it so scary to me. And I know that I've said that so many times on this podcast, that, like, obsession mm. cases are the scariest to me. Yeah. Because what are you 
what can you do? Like, Not you can't you can do, do anything. Like, you didn't do anything to bring this on. No. You know, like, and there's nothing you can do to make it stop. Like, yeah, you can't make control. it stop. It's completely out of your control. And to me, that is so scary. And I know that that's the case for, you know, a lot of the stories that we tell um, on this podcast. But there is something specific about relentless that relentless pursual I'd, where it's I'd just, move across the country I, I think if I that was happening to yeah. Me, yeah. I, I would definitely I would move as far away as I could yeah, yeah. and that sucks too because yeah. then you sucks? have to put your fucking I life. have to put but and to be yeah. honest he might follow you it's not yeah. like he has anything right? holding him like oh my that's the thing too is just like a removal from the situation doesn't necessarily, necessarily stop yeah. him so I mean yeah if she had left that job he probably wouldn't have stopped you know there was just nothing to be done about that. And unfortunately, I feel like so often these cases end really tragically. I mean, right. you know, I don't think it's often that like people are just like, never mind and walk away from right. stalking cases. It's like, it's going to escalate to a point where it gets physical. Yeah. You know? So yeah, this person was obviously like something clicked so wrong in his head where he threw his whole life away for this. So it just scary. makes me, makes me think that. And that's, that's what's so scary for me. I'm like, you never know what's going to trigger, what's going to flip someone's switch mm. like that. And it just, I, th- when I read that story, I was like, this is terrifying. Actually. Yeah. yeah. It's always scared me. It's like you, you know, that show where it's yes. just like, yes. you could just be minding your own business in a bookstore. bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like and now all of a sudden you're the focus of some fucking creepy dude. That's why it's so dangerous to read. I know, truly. <laughs> Amen. Oh, well, speaking of Ooh. reading, what are you guys? Uh, what do you get into? This what are week? we? What are you watching? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, because I'm really not watching anything new. I don't think I've started anything new at all. Um, but I did read Cersei, which mm-hmm. you recommended on this Love podcast. I it. yeah, I like read it in like two days. I was just mm-hmm. like r- ran right through that book. It is so good highly recommended it's not um it's not underrated at all i'm very excited to read song of achilles so if you're looking for a a good greek mythology retelling would recommend nice yeah definitely that's on my list that's uh, that's actually Mm -hmm. my up next i feel like i've hounded you guys so much about the one book that i really love this Mm -hmm. year that i'm like oh i owe it which i did get from the library i got it from the library it's on my bedstand right now Uh, (laughs) i need to download it don't worry (laughs) i know i'm like i feel like we all owe each other one one story this year and Mm -hmm. for christina it's cersei yeah Keegan, you have a few um black swan is where i'm at right now so far vanishing half has been my favorite well Well, cersei's up there too like those two are probably my favorite of the year so far nice yeah nice um i have actually not done anything i actually we were gonna watch there was a couple movies on our list last night and we started uh, i've never seen sicario but i've Mm. only heard over and over and over again that i should watch it so i started watching it and i got literally halfway through and i was like cannot too tired oh yeah my eyes are weary and i'm just like i couldn't it does feel like something you would enjoy it's like oh yeah a lot of action right Mm -hmm. in my wheelhouse and i was enjoying it but i was just so tired it was like 9 30 <laughs> like i can't any longer that's been me i've been sick so i'm just like <laughs> literally at 10 o'clock i'm like good night yeah. like i'm like i cannot stay up and watch anything or- and i had a coffee see i'm yawning now i had a coffee at like seven o'clock so it wasn't like you know i tried <laughs> your body was like shut it down, shut it down. <laughs> yeah it was a long week mm-hmm. i have been um I started and it's one of those things where you like something and then there's mm-hmm. nine fucking seasons oh, of it. Oh, yeah. that's, I mean, not that I've ever tried heroin, but I have to imagine it's up there, <laughs> right? That feeling oh of like, oh, Ooh. there's, there's nine seasons. You can get like really knee deep into a story. Oh, I love it. It's on PBS. Uh-huh. It's a show called Finding Your Roots. Oh, I love I that love show. Finding Your Roots. I have roots. never no. seen it before. You're there's kidding. nine so fucking good. seasons of oh, it. So and it's good. just all about, it's like history and yep. genealogy How have you and not seen this have not yeah. seen it it's so good not this is it. right in your i mean uh, like if it there is was a fucking show fascinating yeah. it is so yeah. good i love pbs so much i do too Ugh. so i've been i've been binging on that big time so it's good can't recommend it enough for people that that love to to think about their history and their people and where they come from it's so cool. really really interesting stuff so um have you ever watched who do you think you are Mm-mm. okay that well that's same same, same deal thing. 
same deal. Cool. Who do you think you are? So if nice. you're into that. Is that also on PBS? I feel like it was. Hmm. I feel like it's never very seen similar. it on that app. Yeah. But yeah. Well, if you guys have something that we should watch or read, if you have bad date stories, please go to our one-stop shop of a website. It's myworstdatepodcast.com. And we love you so much. Cheers. Cheers.